What's up, Applied English? I am so excited for today's lesson because we finally get to jump into our first short story together called There's a Billy Goat in the Garden. We're going to work on that in just a moment, but I want to get us started with a little bit of goal setting for today. First of all, your do first activity is just an itty bitty review quiz from the notes that we took on story elements in our last lesson. You are free to use those notes if you have them with you uh, as you take that quiz. Please note that you do get two attempts on this quiz as well. So um, once again, it's not a bad idea to take it once, see what you miss, study up again, and then take it again for a higher grade. Um, as long as you took good notes, um, those should be pretty simple questions to answer. Um, normally I pray at the beginning of these videos, but I found a way to tie in um, a, a neat little devotional thought into the end of our lesson. So we'll get there in a moment. Let's go to our lesson agenda. Our objectives today, the first one is to identify all the parts of a story's plot. Um, as a reminder from our notes, there are five parts of a story's plot. Um, the story that we'll be looking at today is great for, for identifying all those five parts of plot, as well as tying that into the story's theme. The other thing we'll look at today is fixing capitalization errors in writing. Last week, we, we looked at some of the just itty bitty basics um, with writing sentences. We talked about capitalizing the first word in a sentence. We talked about using end marks at the end of a sentence. I want to cover the rest of the capitalization um, rules today as well in the second part of this lesson. Anyways, right now you are watching through the plot demonstration video. Um, I've got a little surprise for you as we move into our next story together. I'll meet you there in just a moment. Hello, my freshmen. As you can tell up on the screen, our first short story of the year is There's a Billy Goat in the Garden. It's kind of a favorite children's book here at the Hantack House. So I've brought along a helper with me here. This is Liesl. Liesl, say hi, everyone. You're not going to say hi? You're just going to wave? There we go. She's a little shy this morning, but I'm sure she'll warm up to this story. Uh, this story is wonderful for teaching plot and how plot connects with theme. So right after we're done reading this one, I'll meet you at my whiteboard and show you how the plot of this story works. Come on. There we go. By the way, this story is based on a Puerto Rican folk tale. So that's another reason why I like this story, is that it's kind of based in history. All right, ready to read with me, Elise? I just got to scroll up a little bit. There we go. There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. Not come out. I'll chase that goat, says the rooster. He flutters all about. But that huffy, gruff old billy goat will not come out of a goat. <laughs> There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. I'm bigger, barks the dog. The dog. He yip yaps all about, but that haughty, naughty billy goat will not come out of the garden. <laughs> There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. I'm bigger grunts the pig. He sniffs snorts all about, but that biting, biting billy goat will not come out. There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. Hee-haw, I am bigger, brays the donkey. He clip-clops all about, but that dancing, prancing billy goat will not come out. Good job, Lee. There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. Hmm, I'm bigger, moves the cow. She bustles all about, but that surly, burly billy goat will not come out. Hmm. <sighs> There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. Ah. Nay, I'm bigger, neighs the horse. He gallops all about, but that stomping, tromping billy goat will not come out. Hmm. What's going to make this billy goat come out? Do you know? A bee. Let's find out. There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. Watch me, says Tiny Bee. He buzzes all about. But you're tiny, laugh the animals. They snicker, short, snort, and shout. You silly itty bitty bee, you can't chase that goat out. Crash! Zip, zim, vroom! 
be Buzz is all about. Okay. And that smashing, crashing Billy Goat. Well, not come, no, not come out. He does come out, right? What? Let's read this one again, Lisey, just to be sure, right? See this crash right here? Crash. Zip, boom, zoom, boom. Be Buzz is all about. And that smashing, crashing Billy Goat. What? No, it says does come out. The bee does make him come out. The end. Like I said, everyone, we'll meet at my whiteboard in just a moment to talk about how this story works plot-wise and theme-wise. I forgot to mention earlier, one reason why I love this book is its design. Um, it's very, very colorful, but notice how everything is, like, stitched. Everything's made out of fabric in this book as well. I just really like that design. Again, I'll meet you guys at the whiteboard. We'll talk through how the plot of this story shows up its theme as well. Say bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Good job, Lisa. All right, y'all. So we just read There's a Billy Goat in the Garden with my adorable little daughter, Liesel. And I wanted to bring this to the whiteboard so I can show you how this story's plot works in all five parts, as well as how that plot really shows us the theme of this story. That's actually true for a lot of children's stories, where the author really leans on the plot, what happens in the story, and how it happens in order to develop their message, their theme. So let's talk about There's a Billy Goat in the Garden part by part. My goal in this video is to make sure that you understand you know what each part of plot does and to see how it works as a whole. The first part of plot is exposition. As a reminder, one reason why I love There's a Billy Goat in the Garden is that the book has exactly one sentence of exposition. It's the very first sentence, right? There's a billy goat. There's a billy goat in the garden. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to put three dots right there because I know I can't uh, show all of that right now. Notice that in the exposition, we're given a, a major character. We're given the billy goat itself. It's actually our antagonist early on. We're also given a setting. That setting is that we're in the garden. Notice the rest of that sentence, and he will not come out. As a reminder, at the end of a story's exposition, there's what, we, what they call that inciting moment, right? Where the conflict of the story starts. Um, that's the second part of that sentence, right? There's a billy goat in the garden, and he will not come out. Exclamation point, right? Notice that. Exactly one sentence of exposition in the entire story, right? There's a billy goat in the garden. We get a character, antagonist. We get a setting, the garden. And we get conflict. We get a problem to start the story. He won't come out of the garden. Tying back into your um, do first activity today, that question about external conflict. This is external conflict, right? We've got this billy goat. He's not coming out of the garden. And all these other characters, all these other animals are going to try to drive him out. Second part of, of plot in any story is the rising action. Think about how the, the conflict develops in uh, There's a Billy Goat in the Garden, right? You've got all these different animals that come. They're bigger and bigger and bigger animals that come to try to drive the Billy Goat out. Again, external conflict. So as we watch the rising action, notice how it comes in stages, right? The first thing we get is a rooster. I'm not sure how well you guys can see these words or not, but I want to be able to track them uh, event by event, right? So the rooster comes, rooster's not able to drive the goat out, right? Next up is the dog. The dog says, I'm bigger. Dog comes, can't drive him out. After the dog comes a pig. Pig says, hey, I'm bigger. Pig can't drive the, the goat out either. Keep going. After the pig, I think it's the donkey. After the donkey, it's the cow. After the cow, it's the horse. So notice that as the action rises, as this story develops, um, it gets a little more intense and a little more intense and a little more intense. The rooster, the smallest of all these animals so far, can't scare this goat away. Dog says, hey, I'm bigger, I'll try. Can't do it. Pig says, hey, I'm bigger, I'll try. Can't do it. Donkey, now we're starting to get to some pretty big animals, right? Donkey says, I'm bigger, I'll try. Can't do it. Cow can't do it. Horse can't do it. Notice how the action rises and rises and rises. This goat is stubborn, and nothing can drive him out. Until you get to the climax. Now, as a reminder, the climax of a story is usually one point, one moment, um, just one event within the story. And we have to think about what causes a change in this story. Remember that the climax can also be called the turning point. 
So there's something in this story that changes the action dramatically. And that point in this story is when the bee shows up. Notice this too. Each of these animals, as they came into the scene, as he or she came into the scene, um, said the same, the same exact phrase, right? I'm bigger. The first animal who didn't say that is the bee. That's just a little hint, a little clue to us that this is our climax. This is our turning point to the story. The animals get bigger, 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 bigger. And then we get to this tiny little itty bitty bee, right? Bee showing up is the climax of the story. Here's where things are going to change. Remember that we have falling action from there. In most stories, there's a lot more rising action than there is falling action. And that's the same right here, right? We have lots of pages, page after page after page of different animals showing up and failing to drive the goat out. The falling action runs really, really quickly, right? Let's think about what happens to the bee. Bee shows up, the animals make fun of him or her. I don't think we're, we ever quite get the bee's gender. Animals make fun of the bee. There's really only two events of falling action in this story. The animals make fun of bee and then bee flies over to the goats. And we know our resolution of the story, right? B drives the goat out. <clears throat> now, as a reminder, remember that resolution sounds a whole lot like resolve. In most stories, the resolution brings all the contact, oh, not contact, all the conflict to a close. And remember, our conflict in this story, external conflict, is that this billy goat will not come out, right? Through all the rising action, nothing could solve that conflict. Nothing could drive the goat out. Until the hero of our story, technically, it's a little late for a protagonist to show up, but that's a children's story for you. Uh, B shows up. In the falling action, B is able to actually get the job done, to drive the goat away. And at the end of the story, this conflict, the goat not coming out, is resolved. The goat came out. I want you to think of this idea as it pertains to theme. Um, not only is this story a children's story, but it's also a folk tale. It's been told for generations as a way to teach a lesson, to teach a message to, to all of its readers, right? Um, one of the reasons why I chose this story is that it has a pretty clear message. And I hope you've kind of spotted it by now, but let me jot this down for us here in black so we can see it well. So our theme in this story is that sometimes... The smallest, I'm going to say person here, I know in the story it's a bee, but we can apply the same message to our own lives. Sometimes the smallest person, or the weakest, or the gentlest, however you want to frame that, is the strongest. And notice once again how the plot of this story brings out that theme, right? Where it wasn't all these other strong, bigger and stronger animals that could drive the goat out, in the end, it was the weakest animal, it was the smallest animal, the gentlest animal, the least scary animal, was the one who was able to scare uh, that, that goat out of the garden, who was able to drive it out, right? In this case, it wasn't the super strong horse or cow or donkey that could do it, it was the smallest. And I think we can apply that to our own lives too, right? We, we should never look down on someone just because of how they look or because we have these, um, we make these assumptions about them just based on, on how they look or who they might seem to be, right? Sometimes the smallest person is the strongest, and that's what we see in B, and there's a billy goat in the garden. I do have a little devotional thought with this as well. Uh, this story especially reminds me of a verse from 1 Timothy. This is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. It says this, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Some uh, translations say, let no one despise you because you are young, or let no one look down on you because you are young, but set an example in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. It's just a reminder for us as young Christians, as me as a young Christian, you as a very, very, very young Christian, um, hopefully, we can remember that in God we're given strength, right? That um, we shouldn't let people look down on us or tear us down or bring us down in our confidence just because we're young, right? The same way that B, 
um, was the only one who can get the job done in this story. Sometimes God uses the smallest, the youngest, the weakest, the least prepared in order to, um, to do his will here on earth and to spread his glory. I hope that that devotional thought lifts you up today. I'll catch you guys in the next part of our lesson as we cover capitalization.